Welcome to another boring pool repair video. In this installment, we'll explore air leaks on the above ground lines of the pool plumbing at the equipment. Here's an example of a pool experiencing an air leak as demonstrated by the consistent air bubbles exiting through the return. Before we get started with troubleshooting, please take a moment to study this incredibly professional diagram I had commissioned for this project. At the back, we have the pressure side. Anything connected here will be under pressure. This means that water will try to escape through any hole, crack, or passageway in the plumbing it can find while the pump is running, resulting in a visible drip or leak. On the front of the pump, we have the suction end. Anything connected to this end is under negative pressure. This means that if there are any holes or hairline cracks in the pipe, air will get drawn into the plumbing where we don't want it, and we won't have the luxury of an easily spotted visible leak. Here we have a cutaway of a pool pump. Water passes through the strainer basket, which collects any last bits of debris, goes through the diffuser, and into the center of the impeller. It is at this point where the water goes from a negative pressure suction condition to a positive pressure condition as it is flung outward and guided upward toward the filter. Here's an example of a pump suffering leaks on the pressure side. Now, onto the air leaks. One trick you can use is switching the pump on and off. A sudden change in pressure will usually cause water to squirt out from the culprit spot and may reveal faulty o-rings or even a cracked strainer lid. If the pump won't prime, you'll need to pressurize the line with a rag and a garden hose through the back hole on the skimmer with the pump shut off. Don't forget to check the plugs at the bottom of the pump as well. They have small o-rings and are easily replaceable. When inspecting the strainer lid o-ring, check the o-ring for cracks and stiffness. It should be flexible and free of cracks. If there are any doubts, replace it. Also, the o-ring and contact surfaces should never be lubed or greased. Clean these surfaces well as debris, dirt, and sand grains will stick to the lube, compromise the seal, and cause premature wear. While we're on the subject of o-rings, if you've got one, let's check the three-way valve at the front of the pump. The device I'm removing here is an electronic valve actuator. If you have one, congratulations. Just remove the four long screws and set it aside. Next, remove the remaining four screws that secure the valve top. Use the handle to gently pull up and remove the top and diverter assembly. Now that the internals are exposed, you can remove the lid o-ring that seals the top and valve body. As you can see here, this one is old and has a few cracks in it. Time for a new one. While we're at it, let's replace the diverter shaft o-rings as well. Remove the handle and push the shaft downward and out of the top. One or both of the o-rings may slide off of the shaft and remain in the hole. Just put a screwdriver or finger up into the hole and fish them out. Don't forget to clean all contact surfaces before installing the new O-rings. You can even apply some lube to the shaft to help it slide around in the hole a little easier. Once the top and diverter assembly are back together, place it back into the valve body. Make sure the valve stops are oriented to prevent the inlet to the pump from being closed. Replace the screws and snug them down evenly. Not too tight or the valve may sustain damage through over tightening.
If we're still pulling air, there's only one place left to check, where the inlet nipple threads into the front of the pump. If the pump gets too hot, the inlet nipple can actually shrink down and lose its seal. One effective way to fix this is with a good silicone. With the pump running, apply a thick bead of silicone around the joint. The suction from the pump will draw in the silicone and stop up the leak. You may have to check it a few times. If the holes are large enough, it will take several applications. And if it's really bad, you'll need to replace the nipple with a new one. Use CPVC as it's more heat resistant. Here you can see a spot where all the silicone has been drawn in. Just apply a little more. For added insurance, you can go over the plumbing joints with a fast setting glue to help stop up any undetectable micro leaks. There's always the possibility of a leak in the underground plumbing. These are almost always accompanied by the water level of the pool dropping as these are below water level and will leak water when the system is shut off. By turning your valve all the way to one side and watching to see if it pulls excessive air or pulls nothing but water, you can narrow down which line is the leaker. If you only have one line going to the pump, you can shut your system off for a day or two and plug the line between the skimmer and the pump. If the water loss stops, then you know it is the line between the skimmer and the pump. If it continues, then it could be your main drain line. As you can see, we've solved the air leak issue with this pool. While using silicone and fast setting glue to address our various air leaks as a quick fix, they could actually be symptoms of larger problems such as a leaky pump seal or sloppy plumbing techniques. So keep your eyes peeled and thanks for watching.